Shotzi and UI is great. Components are good looking, easy to customize, and everyone likes it. But as everything, it has some downsides. Most of their reviews are 100% positive. But I think it's also worth mentioning the trade-offs in order to make an informed decision before adopting a new tool. So after a few months using it, these are my thoughts. First of all, this is not a component library and it's written in the first page of the documentation, but I'm afraid not everyone is going to read it. Anyway, what does that even mean? Well, it's written also there. When you take a component from Shatsian, you're not installing a component, but you're actually copy-pasting the code in your source code. And from that moment, a component becomes your component. And guess what? If your component has a problem, well, it is your problem. With libraries like Material UI or Prime, if the component has a bug and they fix it upstream, all you have to do is to run npm update and you have the fix. With Shatsian, it's a little bit different. And I can easily make an example. Let's take the combo box component. I scroll down a little bit and I decide that I want to implement this nice status drop down. So in Shatsian, it's as easy as copying the source code and pasting it to your project. Let's call this test.tsx. I can entirely paste the component from the documentation. I can use it right there. And now if I run the application, let's see what happens. I open it here. This is the same drop down we saw in the documentation here, but in the documentation it works. And on my project, item seems to be disabled. So now I have to fix it manually on my project, but we'll get on that in a moment. Something you must know is that in general components are kind of basic, which makes sense. It is not a huge library like Material or Prime. It's actually not a UI library at all. A lot of people claiming it's the best UI library so far often forgot to mention this. And actually, if we go back on the source code, we search, for example, for popover, you find that in the installation code, you need Radix UI React popover. Let's take another example. The button, if we go on installation, again, it uses Radix UI React slot. Let's have a look at the dialog. Again, installation. And here we're using Radix UI React dialog. So most of the components are basically a customization on top of Radix component, which is a good idea, but as always, it comes with some trade-offs. Let's have a look. The first problem I have with Radix, it's not a real problem, but I want to highlight it. If you copy a component and paste it right into your code, you obviously need to import them. And if you go with the VS Code quick fix, the first suggestion will always be importing from Radix UI, but it is not the right one. For example, if I accept it and I actually import all the components from Radix, if I save and I go back on the browser, you see that this isn't actually working. So if I go back on the code, I remove the imports and I try again to import from my components I had on Shad, so all of them. Now, if I save and I go back on the browser, I see that the component is working. And sure enough, it is also written here. So it's not a big problem, I know, but it bothers me a little bit that I always have to be mindful and select not the first one, but the second one. And maybe there's also an option from VS Code to remove Radix UI from the suggestion. I, I don't know, let me know in the comments. But the real question here is, what happens if the Radix component has an issue? Well, maybe you can head over your package.json and you find here that, let's say dialog has a bug, I can simply update this dependency. But then again, what if updating this dependency breaks something else. Maybe it's not something that happens that often, but this is exactly what happened here with the disabled items. Let me give you some more context on that. In this case, I found this issue on the official repository that combo box is unclickable or disabled actually. And this is due to a breaking change on CMDK that if I go on package.json, I found that this is one of the dependency installed by Shadzian UI. In this case, they say that sometimes it is disabled and sometimes it's actually broken. For example, if I now go on combo box again and I grab the first one, this select framework, I can copy the code, paste it back on our test component. I don't mind about this one. Now I update the imports, get rid of the code, update combo box popover. And now if I go again on the browser and I try to select a framework, everything explodes. And the answer, I think, is written here. 
common item must be surrounded by common list. So let's give it a try. If I go back on our component, I find common item and I suppose this should be the fix. I import this one. Let me fix it right now, okay. And now if I go back on the browser and I set a framework, now I can finally see the items, it doesn't break anymore, but they're still disabled. And again, if I scroll down here, I think someone suggested that to fix the issue, you had to change something here. So there's some data disabled inside command list. So I can go back here and check on command list. And if I find data disabled, okay, I find data disabled pointer events none and data disabled opacity 50. By looking at the issue, I had to replace this with disable equals to true. And if I do that, again, I'm editing manually my code on my project. If I check back on the browser, now I see that the combo box is fixed. Maybe I'm wrong, but I have the feeling that on the long run, this dependency situation might backfire. Basically forcing Shatsy and UI users to fix bugs in their code each time a new bug occurs, like I did in this example. I had to find in an open issue on GitHub that someone else reported the bug and people in the comments basically suggested the solutions. So I don't think this is actually ideal and I'm a bit afraid of what this could happen in the long run when you have a lot of components, a lot of dependencies and everything can break just like that. You copy paste from the official docs and it already does not work. On the other side, if we want to be optimistic, it wasn't that difficult to find that issue and the community is quite big. So someone found a solution quite fast and the instructions to fix in our own code were really easy. I just had to change an attribute here, a class on Tailwind, and here when it was broken, it was because common list was missing. So this is basically the entire change. I added a wrapper that was already in my components list. Or even better, someone might compile a list of all the known issues and the potential fix, making it super easy. That is actually what happens in large libraries when they do breaking changes. They also ship a list of what is gonna break when you update and how you're supposed to fix it. In general, I'm quite happy with Shotzi and UI so far, but I also think the downsides have to be clear. Instead of chasing the hype, you should try to make an informed decision before deciding if adopting a new tool or not. But how is your experience with ShotCN going? Let me know in the comments because I'm really curious and also if you found other downsides or if you disagree with the downside I mentioned, I really want to start a constructive discussion. But speaking about hype, I made this video specifically on how to handle hype, so you might be interested. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the other one and bye.